This video is powered by the pros at Pascal Air Plumbing and Electric. Arkansas owned, Arkansas operated. GoPascal.com. We're talking about area codes. It's 479 443 1800. Or see what I'm talking about in at the mill.com online. Clay, do LSU fans actually smell like corn dogs? <laughs> I've never noticed that, but maybe they do. By the way, you know, you could put Ty at the end of the mill and put him in the Mickey Mouse room. Well, if they had one, that's where he would go. That no, no. The doubt Disney suite, it. don't they have it? They have they have several suites there that are uh, themed. I, yeah. I think it's the Disney suite. That's where you would put Ty. I love yeah. Mickey Mouse growing up. It was a great cartoon. I I can't say I've watched it in several years. But. They have don't they have like a, a Monet suite and a in a Frank Lloyd Wright suite. I mean, I, they may have changed them, but you know, Gene and I really enjoy staying at those in those suites. Yeah, uh, my brother he's been to Disney, and then we'll get on to, on to what we came here to talk I'm about. I'm sorry, he, he took his kids down there this week, and of course that category one's going through he sent me a picture the weather's great here in Orlando. it was like rain pelting him in the face sideways yeah the, uh, the mouse ears do not stay on the kids right yeah so, so what's he looking. what's he paying like five or six hundred a night to stay indoors and not get to enjoy any of the festivities he's paying for tommy is that right well, I, I don't know what they're doing but uh i just know he sent me a picture of the weather that uh that uh it's not. It's not what you signed up for when you plan to take your, your no kids question to, to well, Disney. The weather's going to have a, somewhat of an impact on Saturday. And Clay, you probably heard Brian Kelly say earlier this week that oh, we practice in forty and fifty degree weather in January and February, so we'll be fine. I mean, is that going to play any sort of role on Saturday? Absolutely. This yeah, absolutely. It, it always has, and I, I can, I can recall games, and it's not just LSU, but. You know, Texas A&M and all their players are from South Texas, and Jackie Sherrill was a head coach, and they came up, and they didn't have any coats, and it was, you know, one of those uh, 35 to 40-degree days in Fayetteville. And, I mean, those guys just wanted to be gone. I mean, they, they were miserable. I think it was 35 to nothing, and I, I've seen, you know, several of the LSU games. I guess the very first one, uh, when S- Arkansas joined the SEC, I mean they had a snowball fight in the in the stands. The students did, and that's awesome. And uh, you know they just crushed LSU. I mean I I believe that seventeen to nothing game was a really cold night, and you could tell LSU didn't want to be there. I mean it, it you know the body language, um, you know it, it just it just was obvious, and you know. Brian Kelly, you know, his his background is is not, you know, South Louisiana. I do not think he gets it as far as that goes. Now, I think he's a really good coach. Uh, and the best thing to do is to say that it's not going to bother you. You know, if you start saying we're, you know, we're making preparation for this or that, well, I'm sure they'll have heaters on the sideline. That, that'll be something to watch real quickly it's if they do have that kind of preparation. And... Do they do they have coats for their players because you need them? Um, but yeah, I think it's a it's part of what happens in November when you know the the teams in the you know the the lower areas of the South you know go to teams a little further north and you know you go you go to Kentucky you can have the same thing. You know, I, that I would think be, that's a home field court. advantage. I think I heard Brian Kelly say in his press conference earlier that they're just going to have a cauldron of gumbo on the sideline. I think that's what they're going to do <laughs> yeah. day one. Yeah, yeah big, a little big, bit big of crown. Of, yeah, big, not, a, but not a pot. They're going to have a cauldron a and cauldron. a bottle of crown. Of one, at, one at each end. Yeah. That'd be a good yeah, way to They've got warm. some food down there that's spicy to warm up your belly, but I don't think it'll warm up your, your, your fingers. Yeah. So we talked about this offensive line. I know that's one of your favorite topics or areas to yeah. get into. They played miserable by their standard last week. So across the board, why did why did it happen, and will it be different this week, and why? Yeah, I think that you know two things uh, bothered them. First of all, I thought they were uh, out quick uh, with the things that that they were seeing. That it was happening faster than they could adjust the twists and the stunts and. Uh, you know, and I add to it that I don't think Dalton Wagner was 100%. Like his back, you know, was bothering him. Uh, he didn't react quickly 
to some of those, you know, those twists on the outside. Um, it, it, you know, it bothered the snap when there's movement up there. You know, your your center is, uh, you know, he he's having to step to the side real quickly, and the snap goes sideways. I think that happened a couple of times, um, and. You know, it was a play where I guess one snap was so wide it went to Dominion. It was supposed to go to KJ. You know, everybody thought that, well, that's a direct stack snap to Dominion. No. It, and he tried to adjust and, and get to the where the hole was, but, you know, there wasn't one. It was supposed to be an RPO read. Yeah, they, they didn't handle any of it well. And, um, you know, there, there's some plays that you can run that, that they did. You know, like if you're doing those, those, those stunts and twists, you know, a quarterback called quarterback sweep weak side, which you saw KJ do a couple of times in the fourth quarter, but they just didn't get to those plays quick enough. And you know, you can say, well, adjustments you know need to be made quicker. Yeah. And uh, here's the one thing that you know: uh, whatever shows up on film that you have trouble with, you will see it the next week. You you know, early. You, you if you handle it early, it'll go away. But you have to handle it, or you're going to see it for week after week after week. So if, it, if it's something that bothers you, expect to see it again. For the most part, Arkansas has been pretty injury-free on the offensive line. You mentioned Dalton Wagner. Coach talked about him yesterday being dinged up. Uh, he thinks he was going to practice yesterday. We didn't get to see it. Uh, if he can't go, or if he can only go to the majority of the game, what does that do to the right side of the line with assuming Ty Keas Crawford is in there, Tom, or Clay? Yeah, I mean, they think that he's going to be a great player. Not not a good player, but a great player. But he just hadn't played a lot. Um, and I think they they felt like they were going to you know roll him a lot early with Wagner, but he was hurt and missed time. So that was a setback. Uh, I think he's full speed now. But I, I believe that, that he can handle – what you know what they're going to see and he's a better athlete th- than wagner quicker quicker feet just uh just a better foot athlete and he's big enough he's not a little guy you know he's uh in fact he he's probably bigger than wagner uh he's in the you know 335 340 range and i think wagner's about th- three 320 so you know they have a lot of hope for that but there there's he's inexperienced to the point that you know, he hasn't played a lot in this system. He played at Charlotte. Uh, but it's, uh, you know, it, it's something to watch. You know, that, and I would I would be, you know, I am watch the offensive line anyway, but that's something that I'm going to check out real quick is, you know, how is Wagner moving? You know, he had back problems last year. He had off-season surgery. Missed a lot of spring, you know, and, and Crawford played almost every snap in the spring with with Wagner out. So that that was one of the reasons they thought, well, that you know Crawford will be ready. Then he got hurt in 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 practices. Um, but he's he's going to have to play, and he's he's the guy for next year. You know, he's going to play that position. So you know, now's as good a time as any to get him get his you know feet wet, and get him ready to be an SEC right tackle. So, all right, quarterback situation. Everybody's talking about that. That's that. Uh, we probably yeah. shouldn't waited so long to get to it. What what happens? Oh, we, the, I knew know, we, we would. Yeah, uh, KJ. You know, clearly didn't look himself, but he he took the snaps last week. He was the guy. To, is it looking different? Uh, does Malik get a get a chance to start? Does he play more? What do you what do you expect at quarterback? Uh, I mean, that's probably a game time decision. They say it was last week. You know, I was hearing that he wasn't going to start last week, and then he did. So I, I suppose that he warmed up and they like what they saw. Um, yeah, I think that you're going to see some of a Hornsby in maybe more if, if he does well. Um, you know, it's, it's painful to watch a quarterback that you know has a bad shoulder, and he throws it, and you see it, you know, flutter offline, and that happened maybe six, seven, eight times. Well, that could be the difference in the game. And I thought in the second half that it was apparent that he didn't want to throw deep, that he didn't think that he had, you know, that laser down the seam pass. That, and he didn't, you know, I think 
the ball to uh, Knox in the second quarter. should have been caught. I mean, he had it, bobbled it to the defensive back, reminiscent of the interception that happened early in the year against Missouri State. Different type play, but the same ultimate situation. It looked like K.J. was, I'm going to throw underneath. And if the defense figures out that's what you're doing, it changes the way they, they can play. So if he can't make all the throws, then that's a that's a danger sign. Um, so it's something to watch both in warmups and as the game progresses. And in I I know that uh, that you know his shoulder's not great, and he's probably taking in some uh, you know some shots or some things to to make it where he can play. And you know that happens a lot with quarterbacks. You'd be surprised how many um, you know have. Areas that they need a little, uh, they need a little medicinal help. Here's coach yesterday on the decision that awaits him on Saturday. Is he going to play at all? And then the other one is, will he start the game? I think there's two, and I, I don't think we'll get anywhere close to that until some of those answers will be possibly today, some maybe tomorrow. But the good thing is, is that he wants to play. We saw the offense was off with KJ not getting really any of the reps last week. He practiced Monday, kind of threw a little bit, not so much on Tuesday. Don't know about Wednesday because that was coached yesterday before practice. God, does that change your opinion on how the offense can maybe look on Saturday? The fact that he looked like he at least from per- perception threw a little more in practice this week? Not really. I mean, until you see see it all greased up and running right. You, you don't know, and and um, um, you know. I think everybody has some doubts right now. Probably KJ has some, and you know and that puts a lot of pressure on the head coach. How does he make his decisions? And you know that's what Sam's trying to do as this week winds up. You know, do you? That's the 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 hardest decision for a head coach. You got a guy that you know is your best player. He's hurt. He's iffy. Do you play him or do you not? You know that if he's able to play at a decent standard, he gives your team the best chance to win. Um, But where do you make a decision to protect him and your team by not playing your best player? And that's just hard. I mean, Eric Musselman has got the same thing going on in basketball. Nick Smith's their best player. He's he's not 100%. When do you say we're ready to go with you? And he may say he's ready, but you see in practice that he's really not. Uh, you know, there's a lot of times a player will say, "Hey, I can go." And you you know he's not he's not right. Yeah. And you have to make a decision not just for your team but for that player that we're not going to go. So that is the that's the hardest thing and you rely on your trainer trainer tells you, the player tells you, then you have to make the decision, and that's why you get paid the big bucks. you got more options for Nick Smith than you do for KJ, though. That's the No, I, yeah, I get it, but he's still your best player. Same, same kind of deal. And, yeah. and, and uh, we're watching that, and we're, you know, we're trying to read what, you know, between the lines, the same thing. You know, how much you get a little bit of information, but what does it really mean? I'm talking about with KJ. Okay, he's he feels better. Well, yeah, he feels better because he hadn't done anything, right? <laughs> he's not throwing. As yeah. soon as he starts throwing, he doesn't feel as good. That shoulder is going to be problematic for the rest of the year. Is what I'm told. So you're sitting on five wins. You're not bowl eligible. You got three games to go. What what kind of pressure's ratcheting up, and and how much more importance does that put on this particular game, this one game? Yeah, they're all worth one, Tommy, and. I think that yeah, there there's pressure, and you just go through it week by week. You can't play next week. You can't play the the you know the Missouri game yet, and you try to get that one. And I you know I listened to Dave Van Horn describe. You do everything you can to get the next one, and that means emptying the bullpen and and throwing it. You know Kevin Cops for three four innings at the end to get that one, and you can't use him the next day. Then that's what you do. So, uh, you know, anything you can to get to six, and you know that's a major deal for a hundred different reasons. For recruiting, you know, we heard, you know, Richard, uh, Danny West this week explain, you know, how important 
getting that bowl game is for recruiting. It just means so much. Uh, you want to be able to bring players in while you're having bowl practices. I mean, it's just it's just huge, and I I don't know which one is the easiest one. You you don't know probably till about halftime each week, right? <laughs> it's like oh we didn't think we didn't see this one coming. They're up seventeen to three. Yeah. Uh, no. This is the one you throw everything out there and uh, you know tape it all together and see if you can make it to the end. Well, sometimes you need all the information from the first half, and that's why you need Bet Saracen. They're our official partner. Our betting lines that we always reference come from Bet Saracen. They tie, as we know, that they'll give you a halftime line. So if uh, if you get to halftime, you think, well, this is a lot different than I thought. Well, Bet Saracen's got a win your money a line back for that. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know, double down or you know, you hedge a little bit differently. So if you'll go uh, take your phone out right now. If you're listening, it's the it's the app that works anywhere in our state. So a lot of these national apps you think you've signed up for, they're not going to work in Arkansas. So uh, Bet Saracen's the best option. You just go to the Apple App Store. If you got a uh, an Android, they they've got that covered as well. Or you can just go to betsaracen.com and figure it out. So halftime lines, first half lines, second half lines, all all of these things in game, same game parlays. Uh, they've got all of those things that you can get in. And like we said, uh, the, this is the app that's going to work border to border across all 75 counties uh, in our state. So for the action this weekend and things are, you know, with college basketball heating up, you've got the NBA well underway, uh, you've got the NFL uh, heading down their second half of the season and college football winding up, there's no better place to make the game days a little more fun and a little more exciting then with Bet Saracen. Go to BetSaracen.com. Check out that really cool video of how to play with Jancy Sheets. That's Bet Saracen, Arkansas's favorite sports betting app. So if I bet a, if I put a Bet Saracen line out there that Malik Hornsby was going to play over or under a quarter of this football game, Clay and Tommy, would you go over or under a quarter of football for Malik? And that's combined all throughout yeah, the game. I got no clue. I mean, I really I don't. I don't know how to answer that but without knowing KJ's health. But uh, yeah. I mean, if KJ's that's, healthy, I'd say under, you know. Yeah, that, he's that's He's healthy uh, enough. I think he's going to deal with this injury all year. I, I The rest well, of the I mean, that's what I said in the last segment. That's There's no doubt. It's a bad shoulder, and it's not going to get better. Um, he, here's, the, here's the whole deal. You'll see in warm-up. You can watch. How's he throw it? How's he move around? You know, and. Is, is Kendall Bryles stepping up and talking to him after every throw? Because that's what was happening with Franks at, uh, at Missouri. You know, they're, they're going to judge. And he's going to walk in and tell, uh, tell Sam, hey, he can or he can't go. And, and, it, and then the first quarter, if he's struggling, well, then, yeah, then, then you go to Hornsby. Uh, I think you're not going to go through a whole game like last week and, get to the fourth quarter without him playing well and not have tried something else. Yeah, Can you make that bet in the first quarter? (laughs) It's back, and Bet Online remains your number one source for all your football betting needs this season. You'll find the latest odds, matchup info, player news, and game trends. And as your continued source for all sports wagering info, Bet Online features live betting, free contests, live scores, and giveaways all season long. Always the fastest and easiest way to bet on all your favorite sports and events like MLB, MMA, tennis, boxing, and even golf. Head to betonline.ag to join and receive your 100% welcome bonus with your first deposit. Make sure to use the promo code BELIEVE to receive your rewards. That's B L E A V. Bet online where the game starts.